Hey guys, in today's video, let's take a look at Intel's 10900K. Now this is 10 core, 20 thread, it goes way over five gigahertz. So is this gonna be absolutely impossible to cool? Well, I did a few fairly simple solutions and we're gonna see if maybe it's not as bad as we're thinking. So let's get started. All right guys, so recently Intel's 10th generation came out the 10900K, and of course, price-wise, it's a little bit better than Intel is usually doing. I mean, we're getting 10 core, 20 thread, it goes over five gigahertz, all the cores boost up really, really nicely, and the thermals, as we're about to see, maybe aren't as bad as we figured. Of course, my first impression was to put it on a pretty beefy motherboard such as the Apex, and that's exactly what I did. For the first three weeks until I waited for my Apex to come in, I had it on Intel's Z490 Prime A motherboard. That's the Asus motherboard. Now this is going to be more of like a standard motherboard, nothing too crazy, definitely not the Apex, but for running this Intel CPU at stock settings, it handled it pretty fine. I didn't have any problems with the VRMs or anything like that. But now as we step into the Apex motherboard, off the bat, this Apex motherboard does definitely do a better job even at stock at handling Intel CPU. And of course that makes sense since this motherboard is definitely built for overclocking. In the future, I'm going to do an overclocking specific video, but today I want to relay to you guys two different cooling solutions that I use that you may also be thinking of using. And of course, these are going to work on all the different Intel SKUs from the 10700K or even, you know, Ryzen 3900X or something like that. So they're not exclusive to the 10900K, but this being sort of Intel's top mainstream processor, I wanted to see pretty much how it was going to fare. So basically in this video, I just wanted to give my quick impressions on using an air cooler and an AIO cooler on the 10900K. Now, first I use Be Quiet's Dark Rock Pro 4. This is a pretty beefy air cooler. As you can see, it's a very large unit. Um, I had two fans on there and I tested the 10900K first. In general, it seems like when I was playing games, I was getting somewhere in the 50 to 60 C, which was pretty, pretty respectable. And when you fire something up like Cinebench R15 or R20, basically Cinebench R15 would get me some somewhere like in the high 70s, which is pretty fair. And of course, R20 is gonna get me a little bit higher. I believe I was maxing out around 84C, 85C, something like that. Um, and running Prime 95, you get similar numbers. So basically using that air cooler, it didn't go over 85C even during stress tests and their normal usage and games and things of that nature really would generally hover in the 60 degree range to 70 degrees, something like that. You really do need some type of a benchmark like a Cinebench in order to really get it up there so in general i was pretty surprised and pretty happy with the performance on just the air cooler and of course this is definitely a pretty beefy air cooler if you put something smaller here chances are you're definitely going to go over maybe even close to 90 if you have a much much smaller air cooler and if you're doing a stress test or something like that i also wanted to try out this alpha cool i spare the 360 millimeter aio now this is kind of a different aio that has sort of an integrated pump right where the cpu block goes and it has these expandable tubes it's almost like doing a water loop but within an AIO everything comes in closed so I still kind of consider it sort of an all-in-one because you can really kind of install it pretty much like you would a Corsair AIO or something like that and of course subjectively both solutions in terms of noise was you know pretty good they're both running be quiet fans the air cooler had their 140 millimeter fans um, and then this one has 320 millimeter be quiet fans so those fans have great you know static pressure they're generally very quiet and they definitely push out a lot of performance so upon installing this AIO I definitely got a little bit better performance but it wasn't night and day basically it seems like during the stress test I was able to save around five degrees so instead of going all the way to 85 I was topping out around 80 degrees or something like that and that makes sense I mean this is a 360 millimeter AIO so it's definitely pretty beefy and now during most other usage such as games and things of that nature the temperature difference really wasn't that much between this and the air cooler and of course you have to remember this AIO is going to be almost twice the price of the air cooler so you do have that I mean you do get a little bit better performance but it's not a huge margin during most games and normal usage it looks like that difference basically came down to about two to three degrees you have to really stress test it to be able to see that four to five degree difference so basically this is a very straightforward subjective way to look at it I know a lot of people have asked me if an air cooler might be 
okay for the 10900K. And while often it's not ideal, if you get one that's beefy like this, like the Dark Rock Pro 4 or even the Noctua air coolers, in general, you should be okay. Now, if you start to overclock this chip a considerable amount compared to stock or even something like Asus MCE, the multi-core enhancement, you're definitely going to start seeing a lot higher temperatures depending on your voltage. And then the delta between the AIO and the air cooler may start to show a bigger difference than four or five degrees the higher up that you go. So just keep that in mind. And of course, eventually, if you want to get the best cooling performance for a CPU like this, you're going to have to do an open custom loop with something like an EK water block. That's definitely going to give you the best performance. But of course, it's also going to be the most expensive option. So in general, if you're keeping your CPU, maybe just a little bit overclocked, or if your motherboard is overclocking for you, you should be okay, even with this be quiet cooler or something like this AIO. And of course, if you're keeping it stock, you're definitely going to be okay. I know some people get these CPUs, even though they're meant for overclocking, it doesn't mean you have to overclock them out of the box performance. It's definitely pretty impressive. But if you decide to overclock, just keep in mind the AIO is probably going to be a little bit better performance. And if you really overclock heavily, then you may need to have a different cooling solution because you may just pass what these two coolers are capable of. So to summarize in general, for normal use for gaming, even some slight overclocking, either of these solutions will be fine. If you want to go air cooled, you're going to save some money. If you want the AIO, it's going to be a little more expensive. It's going to give you slightly better performance. I think both look fantastic. Aesthetically, they look really cool. The B quiet cooler looks awesome as does the Noctua ones when you have those fans on there I think they look really cool this AIO specifically is definitely not generic looking at all the water block is really awesome I love the design it's definitely a step closer to like a custom loop than the air cooler would be but in general you should be fine with either of these if you're running the 10900k all right guys I hope you enjoyed this brief view of these coolers and how they interact with the 10900k if you guys have any questions please leave it down in the comment below remember to subscribe smash that like button and I'll see you guys on the next video.